Haggerty Classic Car TV. Hello and welcome to Haggerty Classic Car TV. I'm your host Matt Richmond and I'm coming to you live from the Pebble Beach Concours d'Elegance. Um, today is the culmination of a week of fantastic collector car events um, and over the next few episodes we're going to do our best to bring you a, a snapshot from all over the peninsula, um, all the cool stuff that's been going on. Um, first, before we kick all that off, let's uh, check in with the news starting right here in Monterey with auction results. It's time for news. The big classic car news this week comes out of the Monterey auctions with surprising sales both high and low. First, that Ferrari Testarossa prototype we told you about last week did indeed break public auction sales records, going for $16.3 million, including buyer's premium, at Gooding & Company's Saturday auction. The price shattered the $12.4 million record previously held by RM Auctions. There was another record set. The 1931 Duesenberg Model J Coupe sold by Gooding garnered the highest amount ever paid for an American-made car at auction at $10.3 million. But there were bargains to be had, too. The room must have been asleep for one of the first lots to run through Russo on Saturday, a black with tan V12 1973 Jaguar E-Type Series 3 Roadster, which sold for $30,250, or about a 30% discount. So welcome back. Uh, we were just about to set up a shot right in front of this car, but being very careful, and uh, owner Bill Parfait walked up and insisted that I take a seat inside his 540K Mercedes-Benz and uh, shoot the segment here. So. Here I am, uh, sitting in this amazing car, and uh, inviting you to uh, visit Woodward Dream Cruise with us. We had reporter Jeff Sabatini on the scene. Hi, this is Jeff Sabatini with Haggerty Classic Car TV. We're at the 2011 Woodward Dream Cruise, and we're standing in front of Mustang Alley. Let's go talk to some car owners. I'm here with Ron Cedar, who's made his first trip to the Woodward Dream Cruise this year. He's come across the bridge from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Ron, tell me about your car. It's a 1968 Mercury Park Lane convertible. It's been in our family since 1971. Got a 390 in it, four barrel dual exhaust, and uh, we traded it for a 56 Ford pickup back in 1971. So you were telling me that uh, you remember this car from when you were a child. Yes, I used to look into the windows when it was at uh, one of the family's houses, and, and I said, wow, it would be nice to have this car in our family. And now he's got it. Pretty cool. I'm here with Delon Eubanks. We're standing in front of his 69 Custom Corvette. Delon, tell me about your car. It's a 1969 Corvette that was originally owned by one of the Funk Brothers, Uriel Jones. And uh, he bought the car new in 1969. And that's one of the reasons why I call the car Motown Magic. So, and the car, uh, you know, the theme I had with the car is to have a car that uh, was a stock Corvette on steroids. You know, the motor's coming out of the hood and the you know, the uh, race car suspension and stuff, and that's pretty much what I did with this car. So so you pro-streeted it. Can you tell me a little bit about the motor? The motor is a 427 that's been bored and stroked to a uh, 496 cubic inches. It has a 671 supercharger on it. It has a lot of just belt drive uh, uh, timing setups, and uh, it has a uh, roller camshaft in it. It has uh, uh, JE pistons. I can get a little technical, but, uh, it, uh, it dynoed at 903 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, and that was without, this, with the, without the nitrous. Without the nitrous. Amazing. Really love your car. Thanks. So welcome back. There are several Ferrari GTOs on display at this year's Concours, and each is worth millions of dollars. Uh, for this week's ride-along, we look at the opposite end of that spectrum, both in pricing and speed. Uh, this week's ride along is with my good friend and colleague Jeff Peak. He is a Haggerty employee and the proud owner of this 1967 Triumph Spitfire. Um, tell me about the car. Um, I got this car about three years ago. I got it off of eBay. It's only 75 horsepower. It cruises about 65. It's pretty solid. How does it feel when you're driving? Oh my gosh, it feels great. The best part about driving the Spit is when you're on corners. It handles really, really well. I mean, it turns on a dime. Take a spin. Anything I need to know before I start this? Um, this is the key. This is the stick shift. The clutch is whoa, down. There. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Slow down. Originally, how I got interested in Triumphs was I owned a, a mid '70s Triumph um, back when I was in college. So I fell in love with Spitfires, in particular, 
um, back then and always wanted another one. The sound of a 67 Triumph Spitfire starting. Oh. What is it about the look that you're, you're into? I love kind of, it's kind of got sleek. a sleek look. Yeah. And um, for this car, for me, I think what really adds a lot is the, is the luggage rack. I think it looks really cool. There's nothing it. sexier than luggage. Have fun, man. Is that it? I hope, I hope you're not reversed because they're very close together. Ah, uh, yes. Reverse. Ha, 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 ha. So is that? Yep, I think you should be right. Yep, you should be fine. So for you, it's about the look and the handle. Absolutely, for me. I mean, if I wanted something with speed, I wouldn't have got a Spitfire, that's for sure. It's a, it's a cheaper vehicle to get into if you um, love classic cars and you want to own a classic car. Some of these are out there for, you know, three, four thousand dollars. Do you ever feel like you're driving a friendly green frog? <laughs> no. So, this is like the most awesome go-kart ever. Small, feels good. Can't get around, but it doesn't go real fast. Uh, I love it. It's fun. Later. So that's it for this week's episode of Haggerty Classic Car TV. Tune in the next few weeks. We'll have plenty more stories from the Monterey Peninsula and all over the classic car world. See you then.